Do you have a goal or a dream that somewhere is stuck in the back of your head that you're afraid of taking out and pursuing? There's some sort of limitation, some sort of mental barrier. Is it fear? Fear of failure or the unknown? In today's talk, I would like to give you a mindset shift how to pursue exactly those type of goals and dreams, those that scare us. In 2018, I was exactly in that situation. I had a goal, I had a big dream. I wanted to be the first female in history cycling one of the toughest cycling challenges in the world, La Vuelta a España, or Tour of Spain. Currently, it's only a male professional cycling race. There's no such thing as a woman's race. But I want to be the first female cycling every stage, the same distance, at the same day, just hours beforehand. Just to give a little bit of data, it's 2,000 miles over three weeks, 160,000 feet of climbing, which is an equivalent of 111 times going up the Empire State Building, and 129 hours of cycling, which is, if you're into spinning classes, eight hours of spinning classes, 16 days in a row. <laughs> if you think that's tough, or even if you think it's impossible, you're not the only one. In fact, actually, 80% of the people told me it's impossible to do. 80% of the people. So, when you're thinking of your goal, that dream which is stuck in the back of your head, how many people are telling you it's impossible to do? Or even worse, are you telling yourself it's impossible to do? Oftentimes, when we're having those big dreams, those goals, we're thinking like this. We're here in the present. Over there is the future, our goal, which has a binary outcome of success or failure. And then in the middle, that journey, seems like a big black magic box filled with anxiety, hesitancy, fear of failure or the unknown. And because this is a big black magic box, we're even afraid of taking one step forward towards our goal. And surely, I could have thought exactly that way going into this record. Besides those 2,000 miles, there was an entire preparation to do. I mean, three weeks preparation, like a three-week event. And that was one woman show. I had no idea how to do logistics or administration. I had no, how to, no idea how to recruit a team or get sponsorship on fundraising. I mean, 80% of the people believed it was impossible to do. So why should they give me money? And then training for 2,000 miles. I lived on a small little island, and going in circles for 2,000 miles would have been very boring. <laughs> so training was tough, too. And then at the start of those 2,000 miles, I would have to wake up every morning at 4 a.m. to be on my bike at 6 a.m. to ride the first few hours in the dark. And then after six to nine hours of cycling, I would be jumping into a van, which I don't know yet where it comes from, driven by a support person, which I did not know where it comes from, going to a hotel, which I hasn't booked yet, having lunch or dinner somewhere along the way, and then organizing for the next day of a lot of unknowns, to go to bed at 11 p.m., only to wake up the next morning at 4 a.m., and that for three weeks. Only for that small little moment of success, crossing that finish line. Sure, if I would have thought that way, there would have been no way I would have gone that first step towards going for this record. I mean, there were so many obstacles along the way, such a high chance of failure. But instead, I saw it this way, that every step towards my goal is already a success, because I would be gaining connections, experiences, expertise, and even if for some odd reason I wouldn't be reaching this goal, other doors with new opportunities would open up. So I did learn how to do logistics administration for this race. I learned how to recruit a team of 15 volunteers who genuinely believed in my project. I learned how to get the fundraising and sponsorship. And I also learned how to train for it. Because instead of riding in circles, I decided actually to ride to my hometown, Munich, 700 miles in five days, 
just with a small little backpack, t-shirt and shorts. But I also visited children's hospitals along the way in the cancer section. They gave him a little smile on their face, but also to remind myself that there are people out there who don't have that choice of choosing their challenge. I do. So it is almost a privilege for me to going for my challenge. So why should I limit myself to go for it? So when I was at that start line of those 2,000 miles, instead of thinking that I would wake up, have to wake up every morning at 4 a.m. and go to bed at 11 p.m., I was thinking about those precious moments I would gain, of that team supporting me, and that I would grow and excel as a person. And when I crossed that finish line after those 2,000 miles, sure, it was a happy moment of success, but it was also sad because this journey would be over. So when you're having this goal or this dream in the back of your head, don't see it as a big black magic box filled with negative emotions. See it as that every step towards that goal already is a success. And then at the end of the day, what is life really about? Is it really just about collecting successes after successes and trying to dodge those failures? Or is it about creating experiences worth living for? Thank you very much.